If you ever Google mountain ranges in Western Australia, you'll probably be shown images of anthills. Of course, I'm joking, but it might as well be because WA is flat, and I mean really flat. As a state, we take up a third of the country, but come in last when talking highest peaks. We do, however, have the Stirling Ranges. Now, in the past, I've done three out of six of the peaks, so I figured it's probably well overdue to knock out the remaining three. So the plan is to leave in about an hour's time. I've packed a big fat donut so far. Got about a four and a half hour drive ahead of me. It's gonna be a long one, but hoping to get there about lunchtime and probably decide which peak I will tackle in the car right there. Let's go pack some gear. Mount Magog, the first one to tick off the hit list. No reason in particular other than the fact that it was the closest peak from where I was headed. It's 400 meters in elevation gain and probably considered the least popular one of the six peaks you can do in the Stirling Ranges. Nevertheless, I was pretty impressed with the views at the summit. seen anyone for probably three maybe even four hours even on the drive in here I hadn't seen anyone for so long and it, it's honestly crazy the feeling that you get knowing that you're the only person out here for tens of kilometers there's no distractions no noises just the sounds of nature and I honestly think I <laughs> will not give up hiking for a long time purely for that reason. It is just so special out here. Shortly after, I realized I needed to make a pretty hasty descent if I was going to summit two peaks that afternoon. Fortunately, Mount Tull Yerbal Up, which I probably butchered the pronunciation, was only about a 15 minute drive away. Also made up a bit of time on the ascent, which was pretty steep from the get go, unlike Magog. Wasn't really expecting too much out of this one to be honest, but as I neared the top, it was pretty clear that this was a pretty special peak. The plan is to go to the top of that peak right there. I uh, just thought I would sit down, enjoy some of the lovely beef jerky before making my way up there and getting the drone up. I'll just show you my awesome view before I start making my way. How cool is that? Not every day you get to see views like that and uh, yeah, just Really appreciating getting the opportunity to come out here again. Um, yeah, not every day you get to do this. So, yeah, hope you enjoy the drone shots. So 
So just to give you a bit of a ground perspective, that peak somewhere up there is where I was. But uh, light is fading very quickly. I'm starving, so I think it's time to get some tucker in me. It was only about a half hour drive to where I will be staying the night and one of the best things I've come to realise about bringing my vehicle with me when I go on hikes is the fact that I can use a swag. Super easy to set up, all it takes is a couple of poles jammed in and a few clips smashed together and you have a pretty decent sleeping pad. For dinner I ended up having a backcountry cuisine meal that I'd had stored at home for a few months. I actually ended up throwing half of it out. Ever since my Tasmanian hikes I've realised uh, what quality dehydrated meals are and I seem to have become accustomed to that taste. So I will definitely be searching around for some better meals in the future. Uh, good morning. It is currently 2.41 in the morning. Last night before I went to bed, I told myself I'll be summiting Bluff Knoll at sunrise. I've seen some pretty awesome footage before, some cloud waterfalls atop of Bluff Knoll at sunrise, so fingers crossed that happens for me. Um, pretty rare if it does, but uh, one can only hope. The plan is to still tackle Mount Hassel afterwards, so it's going to be a bit of a long day, especially with that drive home. Um, it's about a half hour drive to Bluff Knoll from where I am. It'll probably take me 15 minutes or so to pack up. So hopefully I will get there around quarter past three around or 3 30 ish <laughs> really hoping this is worth it be honest that wasn't quite what I was hoping for but nonetheless that was still pretty bloody cool seems like the fog has rolled in now and it is here to stay I've been hanging around for about 15 minutes and not clearing at all so I think it's time for me to make my way back down got one more peak to do which is Mount Hassel hopefully snag some good views at the top of that one as well It was at this point I started feeling really lethargic and even a little bit lightheaded. Every step felt like an absolute struggle and I was actually taken back a little bit with myself as I was feeling quite fresh after Bluff Knoll. And then upon starting this fourth peak, I'd seemingly run into oh, a brick wall. How I feel on that? Barely even made it up half the mountain and I am destroyed. I think my body is 
telling me I need to eat, <laughs> but uh, silly and stubborn me only packed three muesli bars and three peanut butter slugs for the whole trip, which I think wouldn't have been too bad if I didn't do Bluff Knoll this morning. And uh, oh, it's really starting to catch up to me now. I think the 1700 metre elevation gain is a solid effort in 24 hours. Uh, I think I'll just need to sit here for a couple of minutes and take a breather. I guess that pretty much wraps this one up. I am absolutely spent to be completely honest. Really looking forward to chucking a beer down when I get home. It's gonna taste absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say since the last couple of uploads with the hikes in Tasmania, the channel has really kind of taken off to another level. And if you're new here, hello. Um, just want to say thank you so much for watching and I really do appreciate all the positive feedback that I've been getting. Uh, it really keeps me motivated and makes me want to get out and hike even more. Hopefully got another hike planned in a couple of weeks time. It will be in Western Australia at this stage. Hoping to head over east again, maybe Tasmania. Um, We'll just uh, all depends with the whole COVID situation. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you again for watching. Really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. So just landing the drone and I was actually about to throw another battery in it. This was closed like that and the battery was living right there. Forgotten that it was unzipped and went to pick the bag up like so. That's flapped open and the battery has fallen right down into that abyss there. There is no way I am getting that back and that's 150 bucks down the drain. That really hurts.